gospel. Brother Colin, Dr. Sid, and all the women of the gospel. Thank God for everyone. Let's bow our heads now in prayer. Dear God, we say thank you. Oh God, we thank you for health. And Lord, we thank you for strength. Oh God, we thank you because you've been mighty good. You've been kind. And you've been patient. Now, Lord, take how we put him in the cloakroom. Yeah. But allow your anointing to come forth. Yes. In Jesus' name we yes. pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to give honor to my wife. Somebody say amen. 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 Let's go now to the book of Psalms. Psalms 23. But before we get there, the book of Psalms is divided, it has about 150 Psalms, divided up into four divisions, amen. We're going to look at Psalms 23 and 1, and this is the first division David speaking to us. Uh, Psalms 23 and 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want to be seen, amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want and notice I said that three times. Yeah. Because repetition is good yeah. until learning takes place. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta say stuff over and over again yeah. until healing takes place. Yeah. Until learning takes place. Yeah. I'm not gonna eat five dips of Hope and Doss ice cream. Yeah. I'm gonna eat two, amen. Yeah. I'm not gonna eat five eggs in one setting. I'm gonna only have two. And you gotta teach yourself. And see, repetition is good many times until learning takes place. But in Psalms 23 and 1, who is your shepherd? Who is my shepherd? And that's what I'm talking about. Who is your shepherd? And make it personal. Who is my shepherd? Come on, man. First of all, what is a shepherd? A shepherd is a, a watch person. A, a shepherd is one that, that is a caretaker that provides and makes ways for others that need assistance. And, and that's why it says the Lord is my shepherd. He didn't say the Lord was my shepherd. He didn't say the Lord will be later on. He said right now, let me say that the Lord is my shepherd. And in that I guess it notes a present tense. And then he said the Lord is my shepherd. And David said, I shall not want. And what David is really saying that is, in spite of what I've been through, in spite of what I'm getting ready to go through, in spite of hardship, in spite of brokenness, one thing I know, that the Lord is my shepherd. I don't care how rough it gets down the road. I don't care how bumpy it might get. One thing I can take to the bank and cash it in is the factor that the Lord is my shepherd. So now, who is your shepherd? And any time you ask that question, Many of us have all types of shepherds. Sometimes our cars on Sunday can be a shepherd. Sometimes where we live can be a shepherd. Then sometimes our money that we have can be a shepherd. And then lastly, our own individualized ego that's not set on God can be our shepherd. But what I'm trying to say here today is that without God in your life, you cannot make it. And let me tell you why. Because God brings about relationship. And everything is relational. Even if you're single, living by yourself, it's still relational. Because there's a wall going on inside of every believer. And in order to deal with that warfare, you have to have intimacy. You have to have integrity. You have to know God living and abiding on the inside of you. But then let me tell you something else about relationship. Relationship is based upon the premise of abiding. And the more I abide in him and he abides in me, the stronger I become. Why do I need to become strong? Well, you need to become strong spiritually, first of all. Because the enemy is out to get you. And let me tell you, the enemy will come in all different forms, shapes, and categories. The enemy will come in all different ways and what have you. You might think you're strong over here and you're doing well. And then you might think you're strong over there. And you say, I got it over here well, I got it over here well. But then if you look behind you, you never thought about that. That's the way the enemy will come. And the enemy is no respecter of persons. And listen, the enemy is 
your loved ones to try to dilute your spiritual growth and your ability. I didn't say it again. The enemy will use your loved ones that you really care about to dilute your growth, your spiritual growth, your spiritual ability, and your spiritual mindset. That's why it's of utmost and paramount importance that we understand the dynamic that the Lord is your shepherd. And listen, you got to say that when things are well. You got to say that when things are not so well. And when things are so he will hurt you. And the reason why I'm saying all this is because there are times in all of our lives that we get to the point that we think that we really got it going on. And David wrote this psalm because of some problems. He wrote this psalm because of some issues. But notice what he's saying here. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And then in, in, in verses 5 and 6, he says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And all those things, you know, grace and all that kind of stuff shall follow him because he understands that without, with, with that, that without your walk in Christ, if God is not living and walking with you, you cannot and you will not. And then you've got to understand something else. If the Lord is your shepherd, remember this. Don't allow your past to mess up your future. Don't allow your past to mess up your future. Many times your past will stun your growth towards your future. Listen, we all come short. Not ain't no angels up in here. Somebody say amen.
to trust God. And listen, trust God when you can't see your way. Right. Trust God when all things look gloomy, dark, mesmerized. Yeah. Look like ain't no way out. You gotta yet trust God. You gotta put the words inside of your soul forever. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Who is your shepherd? Now listen, you got to learn how to trust God. But then here's the flip side of that. Can God trust you? <laughs> Can he really, really trust you? He knows that you know church dynamics. He knows that you know church gymnastics. You know how to say hallelujah. You know how to say thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do all of that. But when the rubber beats the road and when things get rough, hard and difficult, can you still trust
becoming more obedient to the Lord. And that's a word that's the long cry that the saints don't like. They don't like the term obedience. And the word obedience means to yield and surrender. To yield, surrender, yeah, and submit unto God. We want, to, we want God to do everything for us, but we don't want to do nothing for him. But then, as soon as the rubber meets the road, as soon as calamity comes, the first thing said, Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll serve you to tell you that. Lord, if you make a way for me this time, I will do the right thing. I ain't gonna get slipped no more. I ain't gonna try to count on you, God. And we go right back and do the same old thing. In other words, we lie to God. I wonder are there any liars in the house? Don't say nothing. I can put my hand up because I lied to him a couple of times. And he whipped me real good. Somebody said he lied. Oh, yeah, he whipped me real, real good. Let me tell you something. Getting a beating from God is the worst thing in the world. The chastisement of God will hurt you. So you've got to become real and genuine to God and realize that God is your shepherd. Amen. And you've got to follow the rules and the dictates <laughs> of what God has in front of us. And really, why, why, why are you saying all of this? Because I think in 2015, it's time now for more believers to get stronger in God's word. A lot of lip service is all right. But God is tired of the lips. He wants action. And when I talk about action, I'm talking about the power of demonstration. See, a lot of us in here, listen, and listen, this is really important. I said this the other night. Oh, yeah, and listen, about 98% of you got a great gift of gab over here. You ain't got nothing. I know you do. Oh, yeah, you know you can talk some talk. But you know something comes a time that words be absolutely nothing. Yeah. And listen, you got to stop yang yang and you got to live this thing. Yeah. So the time is out for actual talk. The time is in for action. And I call that the power of demonstration. Mm -hmm. When Jesus did a miracle, it represented the power of demonstration. Yeah. And the reason why he did miracles because he knew the power that miracles had. Yeah. It could take a nobody and make them somebody. Yeah. And see, you got to understand that in God's house, we need miracles. Yeah. In God's house, we need the power of demonstration. Yeah. And listen, that's what draws folk to God's house. People talk about, I want to fill up the house. I need great music. Please, please, all right. I'm going to fill up the house. I need great music. Stay all right. But what you, you need more than that, you need the power of the Holy That's what draws people to God's house. That's what builds up God's house. Amen. And in this day that we're living in, we need to become doers and not so much talkers of the Amen. Word. Amen. We need to become instruments of our peace. Where there's hatred, let there so be love. Where there's injury, power. And we need to stop talking about it, but we need to exhibit it and let folks see us. And when people see you ask the question, what do they see? What do they see? I guess about, I guess about, about six years ago, I was in South Africa. I was preaching in a church in South Africa. I guess I only had about 25 folk in that church. And didn't have any kind of all these instruments in there. Just had a piece of drum. That's all that. And listen, that Sunday morning I preached that. That Sunday they, they raised an offering. And that offering was $60. Do you know they shouted for two hours in that church? For $60. And let me tell you something. We think that we got everything new over here, not so. Listen, they was doing line dancing over in South Africa. And listen, they had for the drum, and these old women and men, 85 years old, were getting a line. They all ease on down the road.
might take in more five dollars for this Sunday because you all were here, sixty dollars, and they were crying tears. They were so happy and so joyous over sixty dollars. And then when it came time to eat, they didn't have much money to buy much of anything. Had a little chicken and some things of like that. Matter of fact, it's Kentucky fried chicken. That we'll get it. And some French fries. And that's what they fed you. And those people were happy to eat the Colonel's chicken. That he probably stole from some black person. But, never mind. But, 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 but the point is, is that what I'm saying here is that they were so happy. They were so content because they saw God operating in the midst of them. But we're spoiled. I ain't got this and I ain't got that. And oh, it's so hard and so difficult and I can't make it and things of that nature. Shame on you. You ain't got a clue to what poverty is all about. But you got to understand something and keep it in the forefront of your mind. If God is your shepherd, all things are possible. If God is your shepherd, you can make it when you think you can't make it. If God is your shepherd, he lives with you and he talks with you. If God is your shepherd, he can pick you up and turn you around. If God is your shepherd, he can do things that you can't imagine. And he can do it. So if God is your shepherd, you got to act like he's your shepherd. If God is your shepherd, you got to trust him and know that. And brother, you know what I'm talking about. Trust in him and know that. You know and sometimes things get rough. Sometimes things get real rough. But you know something? In spite of the pain you go through, in spite of the agony you go through, God has not left you. So don't get to the point. God, where are you at? What you doing? God said, I've been there all the time. All I was doing was waiting for you to call on me. All I was doing was waiting for you to just to say, I need some help, and I'll be right there. Some of you need to lift up your head and call on him and say, God, I need your help. I need your assistance right now. And God will come to your beck and call. God's still a doctor that's never lost the case. He's still that father in Gilead. He's still blessing folk. They try to track the trail. Somebody say it. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's yet in the blessing business. But you've got to understand that if God is your shepherd, you've got to understand that you've got to love him. You've got to stay close to him. You've got to trust him. And then lastly, you've got to have a prayer life. And I don't mean a hit and miss prayer line. Somebody say consistency. That's it. We've got to have a consistent prayer line. What is prayer? Prayer is communication between you and God. And the more you pray to God, the more God will talk back to you. But let me tell you something else about prayer. Prayer is not just a monologue. It's a dialogue. So in other words, as you begin to pray to God, after you say what you have to say, you need to shut up. And stay right there. And say, now Lord, I, I told you what I need to tell you. But now Lord, I need you to speak back to me. And then before you know it, God will speak back to you. But a lot of times we try to do all the talking and never listen for the voice of God. Somebody said, Bread of heaven, feed me. Tell the Lord no more. God will talk back to you. But you gotta shut up. You gotta shut up.
And then God will make ways for us like never before. Let us stand. Amen. 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 Somebody say thank you, Lord. I want to open the doors of the church because church growth is important. And I don't know about you, but where I'm at in Atlantic City, I got a front door and a back door. And what I do, I keep the front door open. And, and, and a lot of times, preachers don't want to talk about why you have a back door. And you only want to look at the problem in the back door. But you got to look at it. Because if you got folk coming in the front door, and then they go out the back door, something's wrong. There are a few sometimes, yeah, give or take. Some people probably be okay. Yeah, but, but if you got a whole lot of folk yeah. going out the back door, something wrong. So you got to analyze that thing. And one thing I, I've understood, Pastor Long Crowd, about ministry, you got to deal with you. You got to be honest. You got to be upfront and, and say, now, what's the problem here? What's the problem there? And seek God on it. And then God will give you the panacea. He'll give you the cure all. He'll give you the balm and gilead to deal with those yeah. issues. And some of you in your own personal lives, you have a front door and you have a back door. Money will come into your house, prosperity will come, but it doesn't stay long. It goes right out the back door. And the reason why is because we've got to become better stewards over what God has given us. And any time you talk about stewardship, you're not just talking about money. Stewardship involves taking care of your health. Stewardship involves cleaning your body. Stewardship involves the thoughts that go through your mind. Stewardship involves casting down those things that get into your mind like, and, and, and ask God to give you new revelation. So stewardship is more than prosperity. It's more than money. And just like the church has a front and a back door, many of you and many of us, we have front door and back door. So if a lot of stuff is going out the back door of our lives, we need to stop and realize we got a serious problem. But then, after realizing you have a problem, call on God and watch him work it out. But you got to be honest with God. 